Hi, I'm CJ and this is my RC Hobby. In this series of videos, I'm going to be assembling the Hobby King Raven 1500 DLG or Discus Launch Glider. Looks like a nice little kit and uh, I'm going to detail all the process of putting it together, setting it up, tuning the radio for it, and flying it. Okay, just laying things out, making sure I've got everything I need. You don't need a lot to assemble this. It, it even comes with a uh, BEC. Uh, so you've got power for the radio from a LiPo. This is the LiPos I decided to go with. Let me get this in nice and close for you. It's very small. It's a 7.4 volt, 300 milliamp, uh, 45 to 90 C battery and it uses a JST connector which is what the uh, uh, the BEC uses battery elimination circuit so that's uh, I'm not sure how long this will last uh, for flying times so I bought three of them they were very inexpensive I think they were around five dollars a piece and I bought some JST pigtails uh, so I, I knew I was going to need at least one to rig up a charging cable and the receiver and of course the transmitter but uh, these are the main items needed other than what's in the kit and the usual uh, building supplies CA glue epoxy etc I printed out a color copy of the directions those are as I mentioned in the unboxing uh, a lot of Hobby King kits the uh, directions are not included with the kit. They leave it up to you to print them from an electronic copy that they have available on the website. You go to the web page where you uh, purchase the kit. You click um, the Downloads tab or the fi Download Files tab, and from there you'll find a, a list of files. Uh, sometimes people have uploaded pictures of the kits they've built, etc. Uh, but you will find the instructions. Uh, sometimes you'll find other pieces of documentation if the kit has an, an ESC sometimes the uh, programming uh, directions for the ESC are included there anyway I'm gonna get started I'm gonna go from the directions and I believe they have me assembling the wing first or at least joining the wing halves as the wing is assembled. Uh, nope, they start out with the tail section. So, I'm going to go through this and film this process for you. The first step is to, well, the first step in the directions is to remove the paint from the uh, tail section uh, where the uh, boom is going to glue to. I'm going to do that later because I'm also going to rough up the inside of this tube, uh, clean them off with denatured alcohol to remove any mold binding or um, uh, molding agent that helps to free the fiberglass from the mold when it's created. That stuff will prevent the glue from joining properly, so you want to make sure you get any of that off. Um, so I'm going to do that cleaning and uh, roughing up process later for the gluing because the boom actually gets glued to the fuselage later. I'm assuming they mention that first in the directions because they don't want you to forget, but whatever their logic, it's, it's unnecessary at this time. They want you to screw the boom in place and then remove the screws. After you've taken off the screws, they want you to put a drop of CA glue into each of the holes and wait for it to dry. And what that's going to do is there's this little balsa wood block here that um, holds up your stabilizer. And since you may want to take the stabilizer off uh, to make this easier to transport, because then you can just lay it down with the, the rudder flat and transport it in a vehicle more easily or even box it up when you've got the uh, stabilizer on and the rudder uh, that makes traveling a little harder. So. 
they they tell you to put it on with the tail section. I'm just going to go ahead and run the screws into these holes without the tail section in place because I want to make sure the holes are as deep as they need to be. Um, when you put the CA glue in, it is going to firm up that wood and make these screws harder to drive in. And I want to make sure that down the road, if the wood collapses a little bit um, because of the pressure of the screws, that those screws can go down further without splitting the wood. So that's one hole. And now number two. And they go in quite easily. It feels like a very soft balsa. I thought of a few things I might eventually do, uh, modifications, just to try to in increase the longevity of the kit. Um, and this is an area of weakness that I see, uh, is this little piece of wood here. Um, it, it feels like fairly soft ball, so I just made a fingernail mark in it with virtually no effort. So what I might do is take some carbon fiber toe and resin and wrap the toe around like that to cover the wood and maybe even run a few thin pieces of carbon fiber toe over the top and around, um, making this a little more permanent, uh, a little bit better anchored. Um, I'm going to proceed with the build as is for now and think about that as I go. So now I need to put a couple of little bit of CA in each one. You don't want to put in a lot. Just one little drop. And then wipe off any excess and then set this aside for a while to dry. I mean you can work on it other things in the meantime. For example the rudder. Um, there is a top and a bottom and this is the bottom. It has a small piece of hardwood or plywood. Um, it's going to you know, help uh, protect that uh, in, in landings. Um, what they want you to do is remove covering from here, but you only need to remove as much as necessary. So what you do is you test fit the rudder. Slide it all the way in. Sorry, this isn't in front of the camera. I'm having a hard time showing this. Okay, so that is in place as far as it can go. Yes, yes. Okay, so to remove this covering, make sure you've got a sharp blade. I'm going to go ahead and put in a fresh one. Number 11 blades are very cheap, and I go through a lot of them. Um, I tend to replace them early rather than later, and I've been buying them in packs of a hundred. It's only about twenty dollars, and it's a lot cheaper than buying them, you know, ten, fifteen at a time. This is an example of somewhere that you want a very sharp blade. just want to score the covering. You don't want to cut the wood.
Take your time and do it right. One looks a little off. I'm gonna go ahead. I'm just gonna use this as a straight edge. And I'm gonna trim off a little more. I want to make sure that I get contact with the carbon fiber rod. And I glue that boom in place. And that's that. So I'm going to go ahead and stop the video here because I want to wait for this to dry. I don't want to glue this on without this in place because I want to make sure everything is lined up square. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please click like and please subscribe to my channel. If you click the bell icon, you'll receive notifications every time I launch a new video. Thank you for watching.